Well, you're listening to Good Question, a podcast for the curious by Compassion Christian Church. Thank you for joining us today. We are going to be digging into one of our sermon series. Uh, It's something I never thought we would do here on the podcast, but truthfully, a really um, emotional conversation for me. But we are joined with Marcus Johnson, our executive pastor of Campus Development. Join us with love and curiosity in your heart as we discuss how to be different than the world around us. Well, hello. Welcome back for a new edition of Good Question. We have an, a whole new setup today. Yeah. I, I mean, I, the glow. I just feel I just feel like I'm glowing. <laughs> you are and glowing. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm excited yeah. about it. It's some intentional lighting. It's yeah. not you, but that's okay. <laughs> um, you guys, we do want to warn you, though, because we're in a new space, there might be some, you know, things we're going to figure out as we go. So have some patience with us and some grace because that's cool. Yeah. Somebody demonstrated it for us. That, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be fine. In fact, <laughs> it'll be the most interesting podcast moment so far if someone just Stay walks tuned. into the podcast, right? Stay tuned. You never yeah. know what's coming, right? <laughs> That's a tease. Um, you guys, I am really excited about what we get to talk about today. Marcus, I, I hope that you're prepped for this because we'll first and out. foremost, if you didn't listen to Marcus's recent sermon, put pause on this go to the other YouTube page and find the sermon. I'm going to link it in the notes for you guys so you can go and listen. But it's super helpful. We're going to base kind of our conversation around there. And I'm kind of doing a no-no that I originally started out when I said this podcast, which is a sign. I don't know what I'm doing. But that's okay. (laughs) Hey, if you made the the rules and you get to break the rules, that's how it works. (laughs) That's how it works. Um, I did never, I, I didn't want when we started this to ever really like bring a sermon into the podcast because my hope was that this was going to stand alone as an opportunity for people to engage in a different way with their church. Sure. Um, but what's been cool is this sermon series, man, is so intentional. Mm. I think it's what people need to hear. I think it's what people are crying out for. And so mm. I felt like it would be stupid not to do it. Well, I, I mean, I'm, I'm excited about the sermon series. So and I'm excited about conversations about the sermon series. Ironically, this is kind of a brainchild of yours, isn't it? Yeah, th- this was, uh, I mean, you know, I, if you did watch my message, I said off the top, like a, a thank you to three guys who have really helped me. And again, if you didn't catch the notes of that, it's Tim Keller, John Mark Comer, and Mark Sayers. Yeah. Uh, like they, this has been something I've definitely been thinking about, wrestling with personally, trying to figure out how to communicate it when I have opportunities to. And so, yes, this this series, uh, I mean, there's a there's an old like saying that goes with preaching, which is like, if you preach from your own weaknesses, like you'll never run out of content. <laughs> And so, so like, yes, like, like working through this and even going like, I'm really, I did, I I did have some input on, on the, the, what the series would look like all because it's been things that I've, I've been like working with and wrestling with personally for, for a while. Yeah. So the idea of this is to talk about the resistance and how we as believers are called to be in resistance to the world around Mm -hmm. us, to stand apart, separate from the world. Um, Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> you can, you can interject. Good, good so far. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the idea really has been to tackle some of these tough, top, tough topics revolving around mental health mm-hmm. specifically. Um, so we've talked about depression. We've talked about suicide. We've talked about um, burnout. We've talked or we're going to talk about anxiety, loneliness, so many topics that people real life are dealing with this moment. They're battling it as we speak. Um, why is it so important to address these things, but not just address them, give um, a spin take on these things too? Yeah. I, I, so, I mean, the the n- not everybody is, is like paying attention to this kind of stuff or live in a context where they would know how prevalent this is in the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, my own like engagement has been uh, student ministries for a long time and then pastoring, not just students, but adults as well. And, and because of that, like I'm, there's, there's no doubt. Uh, not, not, there's also other things that like our church has done, like an occasional, Hey, um, like, like a commun- right out, like as a prayer or something like that, like what you're dealing with yeah. and across the board, the experience has been that, that mental health has become mm-hmm. something that's been so challenging for so many people. Mm-hmm. And, uh, the, the, the twist for the, the series is, is that a biblical worldview would say that that's not um, that the, the, they the, a trend of downward struggle with these things, mm-hmm. along with the 
trend of um, uh, what 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 people that study these kind of stuff would call the like it's it's a post Christian. It's not like anti Christian. It's post Christian. It's actually trying to keep many of the things of Christianity that you like, yeah. but get rid of the authority of Jesus in the mm-hmm. scriptures mm-hmm. as part of it. Uh, and the fact that these things uh, correlate or, or like it makes perfect sense from a biblical worldview. But the bottom line is, is that we do believe, I do believe, and we as a church believe that these things are directly connected, which means that talk about mental health without talking about like why this mm-hmm. thing is happening or to talk about what to do about mental health with, without grounding it in spiritual realities. Uh, it's, it's neither one of those things would really work. And so that's kind of the behind the why of the series, I guess. What I love about this too is I really do feel like Man, if you are a person who it's it's really hard for you to even think about Jesus, to bring him up in a conversation, or to try and relate some of these issues to your faith, like if you don't have a faith, you can come to this conversation and hear it mm-hmm. and gr- gain truth from it, and hopefully you see Jesus in it, right? right? But right. like for me, as a person who knows those who are not in the world of trusting Jesus with their life mm-hmm. or surrendering to his authority, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. man, this is helpful for them to just hear. What, what are some ways I can naturally just like evaluate or recognize, oh, that's what I'm doing. That's an identification of something that is happening. A- absolutely. Cool. Yeah. And a part of the conversation from the original message and throughout the series is <laughs> um, it, the, what the world, what, a, what our secular world is currently saying is of greatest value. If those things aren't actually resulting mm-hmm. in, in what it claims would be the result, then as you said, like people who are coming from outside the faith, they're, the question is definitely, why isn't this working? Yeah. That's a question we all have in one form or another, mm-hmm. and and to consider a solution is is the hope of this of this series is to say, you know, uh, we can all agree it's not working. <laughs> so maybe what we should consider is that there might be a reason for that that to this point we haven't thought mm-hmm. about before, yeah. and that frankly hits both Christians and non Christians alike. Yeah. And you know? I I just think that's so powerful, so helpful for people to hear and. From the perspective of just like sharing a link with somebody and mm. just saying like, "Hey, I know you're hurting. I see you, and here's a way I can I can try and love you." Right? In that. Yes, you know true. what I mean? It's, yeah. it's really helpful in that sense. So I'm excited about what's happening, what's going to continue happening. Man, some of the conversations I've been able to have with people, man, it's just so different. And I think that that's it's such a beautiful picture of the church and where we're headed and and what's happening right now. I'm getting emotional because I'm just thinking about all the lives that are going to be changed, and it's so cool. But yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to make a really <laughs> hard turn right now from this emotional moment. Yeah, to, so you uh, just want to move right through it? That's fine. You, yeah, you we can talked move right about this it. as if it could be a conspiracy theory. <laughs> I did. What's yeah. your favorite conspiracy theory? Oh wow! Oh Blair on the spot. Um, from sake of entertainment. Yeah. It's the conspiracy theory of things like birds aren't real oh and things like like that kind yes. of stuff. Definitely, just is just it's just fun. I uh, <laughs> from a, from a standpoint of like, what was the last one that made me go? Huh? Look. I don't. I, like I, haven't, I haven't. I haven't. I haven't. I haven't reached any personal <laughs> conclusions about this, but all the UFO stuff that's been coming out, like, like Happened released, time, right? like released by the Pentagon, like actual soldiers yeah. that seem to have real credibility coming out. It, it's it's definitely has caught me in like a I never yeah. expected. Yeah. I mean, I've been watching, you know, nerdy (laughs) sci-fi movies my whole life and going like, I never once actually thought that this was potential, you know, X5, like all of that. And and I don't know, it's, I haven't, I haven't really reached into any kind of conclusion on it, but it is the one right now that's making me go like, Hmm. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have a, I don't have an explanation for what these things are. And so it's conspiracy one way or another. Either someone's yeah. releasing this stuff because they have a reason to distract us, or someone's releasing this stuff because they feel like they can't keep it hidden anymore. You know, what what? An interesting it's interesting. Thing it's to interesting, think right? Um, it's yeah. so funny you talked about those two things. Yesterday, Marcus asked me how nerdy I was, and mm-hmm. I didn't think I was nerdy until you just said X Files. I took an X Files class in college. Is that weird? 
That's awesome. I know. I did it. That's yeah. the only nerdy probably. Well, I shouldn't say that. I'm really nerdy. Did you, in other is, ways, it, is it because you knew that you could get an A in that class really easily? Well, it was because or? we literally were watching episodes of X Files and discussing them about like it was like the arc. I went to a Christian college and we had this thing called J term, and you had the opportunity to take an individual class that could grow your spiritual yeah. life. Or an X Files so X-Files. crazy. <laughs> or you could go on a mission trip. And that would be like a way that it would be built wait, into wait, your schedule. Wait, wait, you're saying that the X-Files class was in, was in the category of yeah. it can grow your spiritual life? Yeah, because we were supposed to talk about like how, what you can learn through God and his... When you say we were supposed to talk about... I mean, we did sometimes, but also sometimes it was like, I'm going there, I'm going to watch X-Files and fall asleep in this class and it's going to be great. Again, like you can, I don't know if you cut College. stuff out of podcasts, but I'll, <laughs> I'll say that there's a scene in the original X-Files movie where he's in like one a giant like building and then all uh-huh. of a sudden the floor opens up and it's just a billion bees. And uh, I regularly will go into buildings that like I've never been in before that are just like, that are like filled with like plants or something like that. And I'll just go like, it's possible that at any There's moment <laughs> I'll just be attacked by billions of bees. <laughs> and I just think, so that scene had a profound uh, impact on, on my life. And now uh, it changes mm-hmm. things. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. Okay. Well, that's helpful. Um, one of the things that I wanted to look at was this statement that you referred to as the conspiracy theory. Yeah. Because this is something that you did. You develop this? Uh, what the statement? Yes. Yes, but I would I would say that we'll get it's in it. it's Why? in the Bible. Yes, it's yes. just uh, it's just trying to put it into some modern language. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So this is what the statement was that you posed to our congregation to us. Mm-hmm. Um, the systems, norms, and values of our secular society are against human flourishing. This can be seen in the mental health struggles that our world is facing. Yet Jesus has given us truth. Not only so we can resist the pull of the world and be free personally, but also so that we can be sent into the world just like Jesus was to free others. It's long, uh, but given the fact that there are <laughs> there are literally like like just thousands of words in Scripture that reflect the idea, I think that getting it down to like two tweets yeah, wasn't too right. bad. I guess. What was the thought about? Because I think what's interesting is that is the let's break down the first part to start. Uh-huh. System norms and values of our secular society are mm-hmm. against human flourishing. Mm-hmm. How do we land there, and how do we, I guess, understand that, and and also make sense of that? Like, is that true? <laughs> <laughs> well, come to the series and find out. No, uh, yeah. So I mean, it's um, it is not a simple conversation mm-hmm. but if i could boil it down to to a relatively simple thing um if a secular world's like fundamental thing is essentially either a, a rejection of god as existing a embrace of the fact that this life is the only thing there is a, or a devaluing of these kinds of things to the point where it's not even really it, it, what's sometimes called practical atheism, mm-hmm. like not necessarily that you're actually an atheist, but if you look at your life and the way that you live, you are living as if God is not real or, yeah. it, you know, that kind of thing, or as if this life is the only one, um, th- that if we are eternal beings, mm-hmm. so much, so much of what Jesus taught about why one should live the way that one should live and why someone should um, have peace and hope and rest and all these different things. So much of it is based off of you being an eternal being, not a temporal one. So much of it. And fundamentally, if that's true... Um, then, then it makes sense that the world and what the world would value is for lack of a better way to say it, to like, get, get yours in this life. Like that's basically what it comes down to. Like get, be happy. Um, you know, why let other people stand in the way of what you want if you have a ticking clock down until you're 70, 60, when, or whenever it might be, and then it's done. Mm-hmm. 
Um, if that's not the case, then the way you should value things is completely different. Not to mention the whole, like, uh, if there is actually an eternal, all-powerful being Mm -hmm. who not only exists, but is engaged, knows, and loves you, Mm -hmm. and is not, like, distant from his creation, but is engaged in his creation and has purposes both for individuals and his creation, then then an engaging in that is is kind of like obviously and fundamentally far more important than our own individual plans or what we could try to do as as an individual. What about though the people who don't even buy that though? Like mm-hmm. that that literally that's not even something that they can stand in, that we're eternal beings. Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think that there's, so there's tons of fun arguments about that and yeah. different, like, I mean, the, you know, apologetics is the term of, of basically trying to defend a faith, a faith. Um, uh, there's, there's lots of fun stuff and whether or not you find any of this convincing. See, one of my favorites is C.S. Lewis talking yeah. about the fact that, um, the way you can tell that you're an eternal being is that you always feel like you don't have enough time mm. and it's like a fish mm-hmm. doesn't notice the water. <laughs> uh, because like that, like that's just the environment he lives in. The reason that we are always feeling like time is like if we were born to exist in that long term, theoretically, we wouldn't feel that way. And mm-hmm. theoretically, like animals don't feel that way the way that we do. Mm-hmm. And there's all sorts of different interesting questions about why that is. And so there's many different arguments around that. I think that uh I think that one of the aspects of it that's really interesting to me is just a is just a question of um, while not everybody would say that they believe that from an intellectual standpoint, there's definitely a lot of behavior <laughs> uh, that reflects that there is a sense of this, which again, the Bible would say, uh, Romans one argues for a sense of the existence of God through creation. Even if you don't know or believe of Jesus himself, there's a lot that goes into that. I think that, uh, right, right now, if I were to look at somebody and be having a conversation and they were to say, I don't even buy the whole eternal being thing. Um, I would probably, just just start having a conversation about a what do the, you believe and b do do you feel like it's working mm. because that's really that i mean that's really the one of the concepts of this whole series yeah. is it ain't working mm-hmm. um and there's an explanation for that not working and and you potentially as someone that might have doubts about this uh might not accept what we as a church are putting forward as an explanation, but there needs to be an explanation for why this isn't working. Mm -hmm. Ours is uh, the existence of God Mm -hmm. and the eternity of man Mm -hmm. um, or the eternal nature of man, all being things that help explain this. Uh, If you don't accept that, then, you know, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to fully convince you of it (laughs) as much as to say, You you need to be searching. Keep digging. Keep yeah. digging because it, it it does not appear that that your greatest good is just to be as happy as possible. Well, you even said it during the sermon, which I'm gonna say you were thinking of good question when you did it. But you had said, <laughs> "I want you to be curious. I want you mm-hmm. to lean in," and that's what hopefully. I mean, we talk. We say that every time we do this podcast with love and curiosity, join us in this yeah. conversation. And that's the hope is that people do, even if you don't buy everything, that you lean in and you search and you dig for yourself because I believe that God is going to, to make it obvious and he's mm-hmm. going to reveal that truth mm-hmm. to you however yeah. he needs to do it yeah. to convict your heart. Yeah. But man, it is, uh, it's helpful to even just be open to having the conversation about like, if you don't buy this, that's okay. Still come, yes, <laughs> still, yeah. still hear it. And yeah. I think- what I loved about the the pr- presentation of this was that, you know what? Like, here's what we've done, and here's what you hear all the time, which mm-hmm. we're going to get to in a second. Yeah. But it's not working. You, right. you You know it's not working. You are very clear it is not working because you're feeling already like this. These so many things we've already listed off about, the burnout yeah. or the yeah. exhaustion or loneliness, fatigue, anxiety, worry, whatever. Um, and so I thought, I think that is such a, a helpful tool. And I want to go there next. The, the real crux of this idea of the secular world is that 
we are in angst almost because other we don't want other people to tell us what makes us happy or how to live our lives or what to do, correct? And the idea is that it's this I this sense that I need to determine my own happiness, follow mm-hmm. my truth, live my best life, mm-hmm. those things that are kind of holding us captive. Yes. I mean, there's, there's, there's so much of the light. It's not that people look at everyone around them as obstacles, mm-hmm. but I think that many of us definitely have experienced uh, getting to the point of feeling like someone in our life is an obstacle. Mm. And the difference between Ooh, the difference between like tough. deciding like, like, okay, then the solution is to get them out oh my goodness, yeah. versus to try to find a way to uh, love, reconcile, mm-hmm. forgive, mm-hmm. Uh, like all those different things. Like, like sometimes the crux of that, that, that thing I mean, you know, I spend so much time counseling different mm-hmm. people and talking about the different things. That whole concept of like forgiving someone mm-hmm. and working to reconcile versus getting them out, uh, a lot of what that fundamentally comes down to is if it feels like they're an obstacle to what you believe is your happiness, mm-hmm. then it's like a, well, there's nothing more important than that. Therefore, I'd rather to push them out than have that be something that are in the way of it. When, if, on the other hand, you look at someone and believe that, that they are not only valuable because of, uh, well, when you look at someone and say, every person you meet mm-hmm. is of extraordinary value because they are eternal, because they are made in the image of God, because Jesus decided they were worth his like suffering and death mm-hmm. uh, to even give them a chance of being saved. That that kind of puts a whole like, hey, getting someone just like out of your way because they're an obstacle to your happiness is not the way you treat <laughs> other humans. Yeah, yeah, other and, and and I look, I know I'm boiling that down to a point that not everybody would go like. That's not, that? that's not how I actually, yeah. like, I understand, like, th- there's definitely nuance and context, mm-hmm. and obviously I'm, I'm boiling it to a simplicity that probably doesn't feel like it would apply to every situation. Right. But if that's fundamentally where our, like, values are, mm-hmm. which goes back to that whole the values of our secular world yeah. versus the values of what scriptures say, if what that's what we value, we will treat people like that very differently mm-hmm. depending on what you're actually valuing in that kind of situation. Why do you think it is that we have gotten to this place of not trusting authority or not seeking it, that we only trust ourselves? Well, I'll go, I'll go full conspiracy theory for anybody, especially that's not a follower of Jesus. An explanation of that is the Bible says very clearly that Satan, we have a, we have a spiritual enemy named mm-hmm. Satan who is the ruler of this world. Mm-hmm. For those who are also Christians that aren't really sure how that works, the, the way the Bible presents it is <laughs> um, the, the death of Jesus on the cross and his resurrection was the breaking of Satan's power in the same way that the allies invading Normandy on D-Day during World War II was the breaking of the Nazis of the Nazis. But they fought tooth and nail all the way to the end. Mm -hmm. And Satan is currently doing that Mm -hmm. very thing. Um, And so we definitely experience his influence and his attacks. And part of it is, how do we get here? Uh, Part of the reason we got here is because we have a spiritual enemy who is very interested Mm -hmm. in keeping us from the abundant life that Jesus would like us to have. So, I mean, there's, there's definitely like a, and I know like when I point to like the conspiracy board for people that aren't followers of Jesus, I get talking about spiritual enemy named Satan is like obviously another step. Uh, But fundamentally Jesus talked about Satan, like he wasn't a metaphor, but a real spiritual being. And I believe Jesus rose from the dead. And Mm -hmm. so, you know, as Cam would say, and other pastors I've heard, uh, I kind of go with the guy that like called his own death and resurrection and then pulled it off. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And honestly, what I think is so, like something that I'm becoming more and more keenly aware is like Satan is so good at disguising it to make it look like it's true, that this is right. And he is just so, so good at helping us buy the lie. Like it's enough true that we'll buy it, but just a tweak off. And then eventually that tweak becomes a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. Next thing you know, you're like, whoa, how did I get here? What is happening right now? How do I believe this? Right. I mean, it is kind of a conspiracy in a sense. You're like, wait a minute, what? How do we, what? The, 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 the scripture does not set Satan up as like, I mean, you know, imagine all the different 
Marvel movie like villains or even like other um, uh, uh, belief systems out there where like the pantheon of gods included these like big, ugly, mean, angry. <laughs> but the Bible has always talked about Satan as a deceiver. Mm -hmm. And the whole concept is that he's not coming at you with like real blatant, yeah. like, hey, you should hurt that person because, you know, mm -hmm. they deserve it. Yeah. It's it's way, or, or actually, you know, depending on, on you, I guess that is possibly one of the things, you know, that whole like, this is justice, they deserve it. It's right, whatever. Uh, don't want to rabbit trail too hard, but the whole concept is, is the deception of making your sin appear to be the right choice is kind of the game. Mm -hmm. Right. And right. so, yes, right. the deception of it is absolutely at the heart of the, of the issue. So again, if you didn't hear the sermon, the, the big thing is that really as a follower of Jesus, we are called to his authority and the secular world is telling us, no, you want to go for your own truth, your authenticity, whatever you feel like makes you happy. Mm -hmm. I, I want to ask you, because I feel like when I looked at that, yeah, those are two that I think I can clearly see. But is there a third option where it's like, I just have trouble trusting anything, where I just feel like mm, it is hard mm -hmm. for me to surrender authority to anyone, even myself. Like, I think I find myself sometimes even doubting my own judgment because I know I'm a fallible human. Right. And that I can I even believe this about myself? You know what I mean? Like, is that yeah. something that we face too? Well, I, I, th I think so. I mean, everyone, everyone has temperament. Everyone has their own experiences. Like everyone's been formed by both nature and nurture, yeah. you know? Um, I, I would, I would imagine for someone that has that, that basic approach or, or the, the, the starting point is, um, on the one hand, there is the like authority and powers, the whole concept of uh, if God genuinely designed both the universe, the laws of physics, how the world works and humanity, like down to our core, then there's an aspect of like, yeah, go to the designer to figure out how this should work, mm -hmm. right? Um, then the other side of it is, is the fact that uh, um, Jesus being tender, mm. gentle, you know, uh, his, his language of, of come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest because, um, I'm, because I am humble. Like I'm low to the ground is, mm -hmm. is what, the, like I am, uh, this, this thing of like, I'm here like with you. There's a mm -hmm. tenderness to that. There's a grace to that. And if you're in a position of going like, I'm, I struggle to trust anyone outside mm -hmm. or inside, Potentially one of the answers to that is, is like, look, Jesus has gone uh, further than anyone mm -hmm. you will ever know mm -hmm. in order to show himself to be trustworthy to you, uh, kind for your good. And there's an aspect of going, if there's anyone you should trust, mm -hmm. Jesus has shown himself to be trustworthy with your heart, like right. with your heart, with your life. Mm -hmm. Uh, because a, a lot of people who really struggle with major trust issues are because they at some point, or not some point, probably several times, put their heart out on the t-ball stand and someone took a swing, right? Mm -hmm. Well, um, Jesus is actually the only one that you could legitimately say is going to be the one that protects that heart and will never take a swing at it uh, when, when anyone else could. And if you think he's taking could. a swing at it, you're probably... <laughs> facing some of the things we've already talked about. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, I also think I want to ask this question because pretty blatantly, this idea lends us to the thought that we should, we should not follow our own truth. We should not um, do what makes us happy or, you know, follow our heart. Is that a bad thing for us to tell people, follow your heart, find your bliss? Like all of those things that we say so common in our relationships to others. Are these bad things? Is this bad advice we've been giving that we're telling people? Or is there a time and a place and a way to do that? Uh, I I think on the whole, there's, there's not much worse advice than you could give <laughs> than follow, I'm a terrible your, friend. follow I apologize. your heart. <laughs> Uh, you know, like, like it, it's, it's, it, there's, it's not a, um, uh, it, it's not like you'll never find happiness yeah. or, pa or, or be able to do something you're passionate about or anything like that. If you become a follower of Jesus, that's not the thing. It's that that can't be the lead. 
Oh, right. It just can't. You can't. Yes. You can't have like that's the sled dog at the front of the sleigh. <laughs> like mm-hmm. the, you know that can't be Rudolph, <laughs> right? It can't be <laughs> the lead. Um, I what you'll find is that God who gives us a new heart and makes us a new creation. What you'll find is is that living a life for Him. Mm-hmm. And for his glory and with him in eternity in mind will often lead to greater joy and happiness than you thought possible. But if you lead with following mm-hmm. your heart, I mean, it's, it's not the only explanation, it's not the only example, but you know, yeah. you just, you yeah. just think about how, how clearly those who are listening right now, how clearly you can see in other people's lives mm-hmm how bad of a taste they have in men or women, right? Or relationships and that kind of, think of that kind of thing versus how hard it is to see personally, Mm -hmm. how often friends have bailed you out of really bad choices like that. When you are like, you know, like, no, he's, he's, no, he's good deep down. You just don't know him the the way I do. That's right. Yeah. 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 He just kind of presents bad, (laughs) but like inward, you know, like all that. And it's just like, nah, man, like you're, yeah. I mean, that's just an example. It just can kind of come out in romance in a way that's easier to see maybe than some other things. But in general, yeah, it's, it's just, it's pretty, it's, it's pretty bad advice. Uh, It is pretty bad advice. Yeah. I, I, I go back to even that we did an episode a while back about knowing God's will and it's the same kind of conversation, right? Like we need to start through the lens of the Bible and then ask what God wants for us. And then, you know, eventually we can land in a place of, okay, if, if you've asked God and you haven't heard him clearly, yeah. <laughs> like he's going to let you do what you want, follow your heart, but not the first thing <laughs> at yeah. the end of the list, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, Or, or he, I mean, there's, there like, there's so many versions of this. It's not just, it, there's, now it's like the, you know, follow your passion when it comes to work and people are shifting jobs and chasing mm-hmm. stuff all the time. And it's like, you know, there was a time in our history and I, for, please hear me. <laughs> Our history is not perfect, and yes. there are definitely bad aspects, including like some fundamental things about. But, but it is interesting to note that when a lot when people didn't have like what felt like any choice in their work, they were still statistically far happier than we are chasing mm. the different things and switching jobs. Especially the like the yellow millennials are like famous for this. Yeah. Gen Z is starting to get in this place too. And look, I know there's financial, I know there's lots of considerations that go along with right. that, but like, like there's a, there's an aspect of the whole follow your heart thing is starting to hit way more than just relationships. Mm-hmm. You're starting to see it in all sorts of practices and how the younger generations in particular are, are working and living. And like, it, again, it's not that every aspect of that old system was perfect, but it is interesting that contentedness and happiness were at a much higher level mm-hmm. before all this encouragement. Mm-hmm. Hey, what's the def- what's the defining factor of what you should look for in a job yeah. that you love it? Mm-hmm. And it's like that advice wasn't around for a <laughs> long time, right? And like yeah. again, like there's there's stuff there where where uh, the nuance of that is a whole other podcast, yeah. but it's worth considering that these kinds of things are not leading to, in the language of the quote earlier, human flourishing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if it, what we're doing isn't leading to human flourishing, what is the answer? And I think we've made it clear that according to the Bible, the answer is Jesus, the authority and the power of God. And so how do we change our mentality? How do Mm -hmm. we make that shift? Because it is a big shift, especially from a Tuesday afternoon to, you know, a a Sunday mindset, right? I mean, it hopefully isn't, but realistically, it probably is. Yeah, well, I... I mean, a big part of or it from is from a workplace to a. Oh, I hear you. Yeah, yeah, a big part of it is is just kind of is is, is uh, probably in a way that's just the easiest to understand would be a um, a redefining of your value system mm-hmm. is like really fundamental to what we're talking about. Mm-hmm what you value in every aspect of your life, what you value in other people, what you value in how you spend your time, how you mm-hmm. spend your money, your work, your, all that kind of stuff. And the, like the, the, the heart of it in a lot of ways is to like boil it down is think long mm-hmm. instead of short, that wisdom is essentially measuring things in, in long-term and eternal ways, not 
short term and temporal ways, mm-hmm. uh, which is a massive oversimplification of a really complicated thing. But a big aspect of it is kind of like, yeah, you you work on your value system. And then the other obvious question is, how do you do that? Mm-hmm. And how you do that is um, uh, all of us, and this is kind of this is kind of like baked into the whole conversation on that first mm-hmm. message is like our values are being shaped by the voices in our lives. Mm-hmm. The reference to Disney princesses was not <laughs> just to get a laugh. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. Like when as we listen to like all these different voices that are putting forward these secular explanations and advice I mean the I mean like dude uh, turning on social media mm-hmm. and listening to influencers yeah. like it drives me nuts sometimes because I actually like them a whole lot which only makes it worse when they <laughs> spout some nonsense every yeah, once in a while. Right. But a big part of it is like those voices do have impact. Mm-hmm. So fundamentally, you want to change your value system. Part of what you need to do is you just you just need to change your inputs. Mm. What's coming in has got to be intentional. The soundtrack needs to be who you want to listen to. <laughs> because there's a lot of voices out there yeah, in the secular world uh, that are all pretty synced up in the fundamental of what they're talking about. There's not a lot of natural voices out there that are communicating a biblical worldview. You mm-hmm. got to choose it mm-hmm. um, and be intentional about it yeah. because you don't have to be intentional about hearing from the world what right. to value. Right. And so if you aren't intentional, that is what you're going to hear and it will affect how you view things. Yeah, yeah for sure. And, and you might not even realize that you're doing it until you're far deep. Like, I know for myself, that was the case. It was like, I thought to myself, I'm pretty good. I got this figured out. I know what is biblical. And next thing I know, I'm like, oh, no. Again, how did I get here? Yeah. What am I What am I doing? And so right. for me, it, it has been, it was a slow burn to get me to the place. And then mm-hmm. to reformat my brain to get back to the place that I needed to be, that took a lot of hard and intentional work and it, time. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. It, it's like to restack your values and to re-identify who has them, man. So, that's... so here's so here's the question back. The question back is how, like, what if you as you think to it, how do you how did you notice? Mm-hmm. Because really, the self awareness is part of the issue, it right? Is, is yeah. being like aware. So. In in an example of a way that you were like, man, I yeah, I noticed like mm-hmm. I was embracing a bunch of stuff that actually wasn't to my good or mm-hmm. what didn't agree with the Bible or whatever. Like what 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 was the thing that actually helped you be aware that that was the case? The the first sign was my husband. He called me out about it, which thank goodness for him. Right. Um. But then also, I just recognized in my friendships the type of conversations we were having were not to my core. They weren't mm-hmm. to who I was. Mm-hmm. They were to the bend of what they wanted to talk about. And I mm-hmm. wanted them to, to see the love in me and to hear, you know, to hear them well. Sure. And I think it all started out very innocently. And then it was like, oh, that's a good point. Oh, that's true. And then because my phone hears everything we talk about, I get targeted <laughs> for other things that seem to keep you in that path. There's your conspiracy theory. <laughs> you're like, you're in the, the phone's definitely bring listening. Bring it on, y'all. Bring it on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. I, I but I do, I honestly think it started really slow with just conversations with other people and frankly, people I respect and I still value in my life. Yeah. And those conversations just quickly became less about me standing up for things I thought and bending to the way of, Mm -hmm. oh, I don't want to create a wave here. This probably isn't a hill I want to die on. So let's just love them through it. And that love turned into a way of compliance for me that I don't think Mm -hmm. I intended or that I knew was happening until I went home. And I, it was like, man, it was a dark world around me. And my husband just saw that and called it out and recognized like I wasn't being myself. And I think I was going to church more often and, or I, I, always been a regular agenda. So not more often, but more often I was sitting in the pews and thinking, I don't know that I co-signed that. Yeah. That's not where yeah, I yeah. stand, right? Yeah, yeah. And it was like, uh-oh. When <laughs> I started to do that, it was kind of like, yeah. a, wait a minute, uh-huh. this isn't, I, and I get it. I 
made a I'm I moved from Ohio to South Georgia, right? So there was there's a difference there in sure. how they and hopefully not in the Bible and <laughs> those things, but <laughs> it was definitely a culture change for me when I mm. came down south. And so there were some things that I think initially was just like I probably wouldn't have said it that way or whatever. Right. And it right. was but it, there were definitely moments where I thought, uh oh, this is now Blair where is that actually the Bible, or is that Blair seeping into here? Look, so first of all, as a as a pastor, the whole like I wouldn't have said it that way. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> people, I'm sure, think that about about like when I preach mm-hmm. pretty consistently. <laughs> uh, and what, what I think the check is that all of us need, mm-hmm. because for what it's worth, I think that too, mm-hmm. when I listen to Christian voices, I'm like, oh, I'm not sure I would have said it that way, or I'm not sure I co-sign on yeah. like the whole thing. The, the The question in that should be like, okay, <laughs> did you not like the tone mm-hmm. uh, or the like the connotation of some of those words mm-hmm. or, but like, is there actually truth at the root of it? Because you yeah. can't throw the baby out with the bathwater when it comes to like the communication That's of the biblical truth. the second time truth. somebody's used that phrase today. Welcome to the South, right? I, I mean, is that not like, an Ohio so thing? Unsettling. I'm not sure. That, yeah. okay, throw that baby guess. out with the bathwater. Uh, but the other side of it is is like, so Sam, uh, uh, can we say your husband's so, like, yes, should we can like, say like, communicate? Okay. Name, yeah. <laughs> Sam Bowman. Uh, is it Bowman? Bowman. My bad. Oh man, this is awkward. Well, all right. Um, it's okay. Signing off. Okay, no. Uh, the, like we all need mm-hmm. that. Like mm-hmm. that. Like there's no. Um, I don't think there's any substitute for reading the Bible. Yeah, right. <laughs> and there's there's no substitute for uh, giving people permission mm-hmm. to call you out on stuff. Right. Uh, to having a partner in this because we all can and do get blind to our own. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, wandering. Mm-hmm. But I mean, but you're even though in, in but even those you're hearing that and you're like, well, I'm single. Well, I mean, you know, my wife isn't with me when I go do a bunch of stuff in the world. Uh, but, I, but I can look, I have looked and do look at other people and go, Hey man, like yeah. we're going in this together. So like me and you, yep. Like we, well, there's an intentionality here, mm-hmm. right? And so, uh, hey, Jake Woodward, uh, my boy Jake, <laughs> we're gonna be on the sidelines of the soccer game because our kids are playing. Mm-hmm. Like, let's not let this sideline be just a mm-hmm. we're just here and then we just leave, or we're just here and just hanging out with each other and then just leave. Mm-hmm. Like, there needs to be an intentionality about mm-hmm. that if we're gonna try to love people yeah. that are out there. And there's so many versions of that that aren't necessarily connected to your spouse, who mm-hmm. though. Hopefully your spouse is yeah. the number one voice in that for those of y'all that are married. Uh, but they're like, you don't have to be married to have that kind of voice in your life and to I be able to help too, in those that's ways. A, that's helpful to know and to hear because there are times where I think I can't expect Sam to carry all of that weight. I can't expect him mm. to do all of that work for me. That would be insane. And no offense, he's probably like, I didn't sign up for all of that. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, and like there are just certain things that women in my life need to speak to that he can't because that's a different place. And so I do think that's such an important thing to recognize and to be aware of mm. uh, is that there need to be not – it's not just one consistent voice. There needs to be multiple who are speaking truth and wisdom and love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, okay. The, I don't want to end on it, but I do want to get to the point or to the idea, which we've been really talking about, that – to be the resistance, to be different than the culture or the world around us, man, it comes at a cost and it is hard. And um, I don't think the Bible is shy about that. I mean, I think we talk about- If anything, the Bible says stuff that like we would hesitate to like even repeat. (laughs) Yeah, the the Bible is not shy about that. And we've been reading 1 Peter together, or we had read 1 Peter together. And and so much of that book is talking about, you're going to suffer. This is going to hurt. It literally says, don't be surprised yeah. when you suffer yes. Yeah, for because of your faith. Yeah, for sure. So how do we handle with grace and with love, rejection, suffering, the pain that we could experience as we walk into this state of resistance? Mm-hmm. Uh, w- one is I do think it's encouraging to um, remember that this is not 
uh, what's what's the phrase? This isn't a bug; it's a feature. Mm. Like it is literally mm. part of what Christianity is oh supposed goodness, to be experienced. Yes. Uh, I mean, one of my favorites is I don't remember what chapter of the Book of Acts. So throw your shame at the pastor <laughs> on the podcast, but because you didn't bring your Bible, uh, I know, right? <laughs> oh, come on, man! Don't point that stuff out. Jeez. All right, it's okay, so my phone has one. We're good. Uh, I haven't memorized. No, uh, it's a uh, there's there's a story in the Book of Acts where um, they're beaten. Uh, mm-hmm. Disciples of Jesus are beaten, and they they walk away. And the phrasing is is that um, uh, rejoicing that they were deemed worthy of suffering shame mm-hmm. in the name and in in His name. This yeah. this concept of like of a it's a badge of honor. Mm-hmm. We can't lean into like suffering for suffering's sake is good because it's not. But there needs to be an aspect of man. When you are are like like in the pocket mm. of being Jesus to somebody mm. and experience rejection for it, that is like like heaven is applauding, and mm. you just need to know that you just need to know that it's really important to hold on to that. Um, uh, otherwise, yeah, it stinks. Mm. I know, guys. Who, uh, who, who have been waiting around for like a like a promotion at work, yeah. and the only explanation they can think of is the fact that they're living their faith in a way that mm-hmm. like is kind of abrasive at times. Mm-hmm. And I know I, 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 these guys. I'm thinking of two right now. Like they're not, you know, um, they're not living their faith out in a way that any of us would go. That's weird. <laughs> um, <laughs> But they are living their faith out in a way that, like, uh, also they're not blending in, mm-hmm. and there is an aspect of it's hard. It's hard to to ride the connections with your boss to a promotion mm-hmm. if you make your boss a little uncomfortable because he knows that you don't approve of everything that he's doing. Yeah. That's hard. One hundred percent. You know, and uh, I mean, there's all there's all sorts of versions of it. I have a pretty extreme story from college where all of my friend group, literally, like on the same day, just <laughs> gone. The guys mm. that were my best friends from freshman year. Now I caused that mm. intentionally. I literally was like, I don't think we could do this anymore. <laughs> I broke up with all of them at the same time. Mm. Uh, but it was because I was like, there's there's uh-huh. these are the choices. The choice is, mm. is that I uh, keep blending in because it's uncomfortable that I keep like saying no to things mm. and it's uncomfortable that I keep inviting you to church and you never come and all that. Like, so I can just live in this discomfort that has existed for years, but I'm not. What I'm doing is I've just decided to stop trying mm. and that's not okay either. Yeah. But y'all have made it pretty clear that you don't want me mm-hmm. to do this. So like I'm not sure like this is working anymore. Right. I'll bail you out of jail and did. Uh, I'll be your DD and was. Mm-hmm. Anything you ever need, you call me. Anytime we get to hang out, I'm gonna love every second of it. But like the whole, I'm gonna come hang out as y'all pregame and then not do that and then just leave mm-hmm. and we're gonna act like this relationship is healthy. Beneficial. It's yeah. not working, you yeah. know? And so, uh, mm. anyway, it's there, there are aspects of that. I too, it is hard. Uh, this is a whole thing that probably, you know, it's another time, like when this we talk, when we talk about mental we health, should talk about more my, my, uh, my clinic, my time where I was the only time in my life, I've struggled with depression my whole life. The only time I've been like clinically like diagnosed with depression followed that incident. Mm. Like it, the the loneliness that came from that, um, mm-hmm. like was was ultimately crippling to mm-hmm. me, and uh, so when I say there's a cost to this, I don't regret doing it. Mm-hmm. I wish that I had been wiser about my need for community. And didn't Mm -hmm. like throw everything aside Mm -hmm. without any other plan (laughs) Mm -hmm. Uh, because I just ended up lonely and Mm -hmm. loneliness led to depression and depression led to me almost failing out of college. Mm -hmm. Um, So the cost is real, but ultimately it was a good thing that I went through. But those kinds of things uh, repeat themselves in so many ways. Um, And uh, ultimately 
a heart of it is, is like there needs to be a purpose to it. Mm-hmm. I knew that my hope for actually influencing those friends Mm -hmm. was to create a separation based around my faith that had not existed for too long. Mm. And I was right. I had relationships with those guys that led, God was the one that saved them. Mm. But like a couple of those guys, the relationship became one that uh, a return that was that city on a hill mm. looking at a life and saying, whatever that is, I need more of that in my life. Mm. And the answer was it was Jesus that would not have existed if I had stayed in the relationship with him that I was in. Mm. But the separation was extraordinarily painful. Yeah. And it also didn't happen with all of those friends. Right. It happened with a couple of them. Mm-hmm. But it wouldn't have happened with those couple if I hadn't made that choice. Right. And so, like, like yes, wow. the pain of that is real. Mm-hmm. It's real. It also has a purpose. And I, I always go back to that reminder because for me, it's felt so true that every time I'm walking through that season of suffering mm-hmm. or of experiencing deep grief or pain, man, he's nearer than ever. It's true. Like, I feel him in a different sense than I can when things are going happy-go-lucky amazing. And so I just think, whew. I didn't expect that. But like, it's just one of those things that it is true. When you're suffering, there is hope on the other side. There is peace that is going to come and it's only from him. Mm. And man, that just is something that I hold out hope for when I'm in those moments. And it's a reminder, a call back to me almost. that When you're going through it, it's going to be okay. You're going to get through this. But also... For people who don't know that, that's what's so hard is trying to convince them that there is light at the end of the tunnel, Mm. that the city on the hill exists. Yeah. And um, man, that's my hope for this series. Whew. Sorry, guys. I can't handle it. (laughs) But it is this idea. That's like the hope of this all is that people will see that, that hope, that presence, the goodness of God in the midst of the pain and the suffering because it's real and it's coming for all of us. Mm. Um, Just you got to know which side you're going to be on. Mm. Uh, okay. Anyways, any final thoughts from you? Uh. No, but I'm glad you got you got emotional a couple of times, and, <laughs> and like I, you know, it's it's like it's it's because this is like there's an aspect of this that those of us who uh, who who bear some of the wounds of of making these choices. To suffer again, not for this, like, like there is an embracing of it because we do genuinely believe our values have changed yeah. based off of how good we believe Jesus to be. Mm-hmm. That there is one of those things where the pain is real enough that we can shed tears over it. Um, but the hope and the purpose and the fulfillment mm-hmm. is enough that like we'll keep walking into the exact same thing because we know mm-hmm. That that the um the joy of that is real, mm-hmm. and but the um the potential like happiness of avoiding that pain mm-hmm. it's fake. Yeah, it's empty calories. 100%. It's 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 eaten it's eaten Lucky Charms for breakfast. <laughs> like it just like it seems good in the moment, but it's not actually helping you. Yeah. And there's so many versions of that that mm-hmm. uh, it's why. And I think I you know I think I've I said I said this in the message, and I, it's true. It's why the purpose behind this is not meant to be like, hey, we really want to sit up here <laughs> and point out how what you believe is wrong. <laughs> How everything you're doing is not right. <laughs> right. I mean, it's just like, yeah. I think that I can understand why people have those feelings because frankly, sometimes that is what it feels like. It feels like Christians trying to throw thunderbolts like Zeus at people <laughs> for stuff. Um, but rather, it's one of those things of going like, we genuinely believe that there's mm-hmm. a better way to live this out, yeah. which doesn't mean that we have perfect lives, particularly perfectly mentally you know, healthy all the time kind of <laughs> Stable, lives. Yeah. Um, uh, but, but the, but the, we understand that there's a, there's a, um, there's an abundance mm. of life that comes from having a foundation, uh, on someone who does not change or shift, Yeah. you know, um, God. and 
Yeah. That's why, that's why, that's why we talk about it. That's why we find it so important. So good. Um, thank you very much for, for going into more depth. I know there was so much that you probably had in your sermon prep that you had to cut for the sake of time. <laughs> it, was, it was a bit. It was a bit. So yeah. We appreciate yeah, yeah. being able to pick your brain a little bit more. Um, we hope you guys will honestly tune in for the rest of the series. I do think it's going to be beautiful and God has big plans for what he's going to do in his people. And yep. so I can't wait to watch that, um, to continue to experience it with you. Um, but thank you, Marcus. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, no problem. I'm, I'll look forward to the next time to hang out with you, Blair. Always. We'll switch outfits. <laughs> I'll do. I'll do. I'll do. Yeah, I'll be. I'll be in the hot pink jacket. Blair will be in just a, a sweatshirt of some kind. Tennis you know, shoes, yeah. yeah, tennis shoes uh, and a sweatshirt. Sounds great. Right. Yeah, sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thanks for listening to Good Question and for bringing your questions with love and curiosity in your heart. We always appreciate hearing what you guys have to say. So please rate, subscribe the podcast. And if you have something you want us to talk about, we'd love to know that as well. You can let us know by going to online at CompassionChristian.com. Just email us. We'd love to hear from you. But thank you so much for navigating faith one good question at a time.